force vectors have a magnitude and a direction. This is an excerpt video from the force vectors and vector components main video. If you'd like to check that 11 minute video to see the context of these 2D force components explanation, make sure to check out the link in the description below. The notation includes a small arrow above the load variable like F or P and the numbers refer to that magnitude in force units like newtons or pounds and the direction usually in degrees, not radians. Even though in math-focused courses, this direction is absolute with the positive orientation of the horizontal line being zero and angles going counterclockwise increase in value, for statics, the angle or direction of a force vector can be with respect to any linear geometry of the setup. Besides this notation, vectors can be represented with their three-dimensional components in Cartesian coordinates, and although we will cover this much later, in cylindrical or spherical coordinates too. A force vector can therefore be presented as its component's magnitude in the x, y, and z axis, with the circumflex mark above the i, j, and k directional unit vectors respectively, or separately as f sub x, f sub y, and f sub z. Finding these components is useful because what we will use to find the reaction forces, and with them the internal forces, is stating that a simple sum of forces in the x, y, or z direction, and later in the course, sum of moments and torques, are equal to zero, since in most static scenarios, the members of the structure are not accelerating. When given a force vector with its magnitude and direction, simple trig functions like sine, cosine, and tangent are used to find the vector components. To find a force vector magnitude and direction based on its components, which is the opposite process, we use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's start with a 2D force vector F, 5 newtons in magnitude, at 53.13 degrees. This force vector can be written as 3i plus 4j newtons, or we can say that fx is 3 newtons and fy is 4 newtons. To find these values here, we are using the definition of sine, which is the length of the side opposite to the angle you know, over the hypotenuse, and cosine, which is the length of the adjacent side to the angle you know, over the hypotenuse. If in this case sine of 53.13 is Fy over the magnitude of F and cosine of 53.13 is Fx over the magnitude of F, then Fy is F sine of 53.13 and Fx is F cosine of 53.13. Now I say in this case because sine is not necessarily the Y component and cosine the X component. If we had been given the complementary angle 36.87, then Fy would be F cosine of 36.87 and Fx would be F sine of 36.87. Notice that in the first case I used sine for Y and in the second sine for X. But this of course matches our values, since the sine of theta is equal to the cosine of the complementary angle. This means that depending on the angle you are given or the angle you can measure, sine and cosine can be used to find any of the components. This is obviously especially true for 3D vectors, as there will even be Z components, so of course we cannot generalize Y and X for sine or cosine. Given the components of a vector, we can also find the vector's magnitude and direction. Since the components are orthogonal, meaning that they form a 90 degree angle between them, we can use Pythagoras to find the hypotenuse, which would be the magnitude of the vector. To find the direction of the vector, we would use the trig function tangent, which is equal to the length of the opposite side of the given angle over the length of the side adjacent to that angle, and therefore Fy over Fx. The angle would therefore be the arctangent of Fy over Fx. Now this angle can be tricky, since if we had, for example, fx equal to minus 5 and fy equal to minus 12, solving for the angle mathematically would still give us a value between 0 and 90 degrees, when in fact we know that the angle from the positive direction of the horizontal line, which I just mentioned was the absolute reference for angles, would be between 180 and 270 degrees. You can check out a trig related video link in the description below if you want to brush up on this. But for static scores purposes, just remember that you need to identify the quadrant in which the resulting vector is pointing towards. 
If you'd like to watch some two-minute example videos pertaining what we just went over regarding the components of 2D force vectors, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.